and welcome to episode 47 of Ripping the Rack podcast. I am one of your Triforce Tri hosts. My name is Tim. Thank you. I don't know why I just said thank you, but felt like the right thing to do. Very polite. I'd, I'd very like, polite. hey, thank you. I don't know. I've got, I'm sorry, but before I introduce my other three, the other two legs here, I've got one cat on this side and one cat on this side. Like they're about ready to throw, they're about ready to throw down. Um, and I'm a little bit scared at the moment. So, second leg of the Triforce. Brian, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Apparently, it's uh, we need Michael Buffer in your basement there to go, it's time! And then we'll introduce the cats, and they can go at it. A- absolutely. And the third leg of the Triforce, Maki Pins. Mark, how you doing? Not too bad, boys. Happy to be the third leg. Happy to be here again. Okay. You guys talk, talk amongst yourself. <laughs> I just oh, am going to read shit. down below here. Unless... Marky, how's it going on this fine, wonderful Tuesday of bowling talk? Not too bad. I love the bowling show. I can't wait to talk about a little bit of bowling here. Uh, good stuff coming up. Uh, stuff starting learned. to open back up. Yep. You know, the, the vaccines are helping us get back, and hopefully we can start having some more tournaments here and get I've things noticed, going. I've noticed business picking up here at the lanes as well. Not so much my leagues because that's stayed constant since we've been open back in the summer. And once everything came back in September, all the leagues have stayed constant. A lot more open bowlers, people coming in, just having beers, having fun, getting back outside and doing like, you know, human things Mm -hmm. again, like in a fun setting where you can play music really loud and kind of get drunk and make noise and. You know, things have been good around here as of lately. I've actually been good. falling good lately. Don't tell too many people too loud, but the pins have been falling pretty good for me. Um, That's always a good feeling. Yeah, it is. Pins it is. falling is good. Yes, it really is. Pins yes, falling is. It's good. What have you been up to, um, How you rolling? Yeah, how you doing? Ah, struggled, to, uh, struggled on Wednesday night. Um, just, I'm, I don't know if the ball's flat or what's, I'm punching a lot. And I don't know if it's flat, but I'll figure it out. But, uh, you know, uh, last weekend in the uh, the state tournament we had here in Maine, Belfast, I think I said last night, well, you know, not bad, 583, but I gave away a 600 with a 98 string. So I I took three months off. I'm, I'm rusty. That's all I could say. <laughs> That's all. And you shed well, look, that rust. And this is what I've tried. This is what I tried to tell you, Brian, is you took time off and you've lost 100 pounds in the last year. That's a big years. Why, two years. Why are you getting so mad? Because I hold myself to a high standard, probably I, higher I, than I should. Okay, so you hold yourself this, to a high standard. That's okay. Right. Does that mean you need to get mad and slam the ball return and kick the ball return and, uh, and uh, get that get, angry? Don't say I've, you didn't, because I have witnessed the last there's a two difference. weeks. There's a difference. Where I between, felt like I was your father, and I had to scold you a couple of times. No, there's a difference between kicking the ball return and just okay. tapping it. You didn't. Okay, let me preface that. You didn't. You didn't. Chuck Norris kick it. I wouldn't even say you, Steven Seagal, kicked it. But that was more than a light tap. I kicked it with the effort that Jim A from South Park would have kicked it with. You also have to take into a consult, into uh, consideration the mass of the man. What he would call a slight kick would legitimately be a flying thrust kick off the top rope for men like me or you, Tim. I, I do kind of believe. Yes. Like so, I'm more, I'm more horn swoggle. So, <laughs> you know, right. Right. But I, you know what? I bowl with the owner of the team, the owner of the alley on Thursday nights. He hasn't told me anything yet, so. Well, he hasn't bowled the last several weeks either. That means he can sit behind the bar and watch. Which, you know, he's not doing because he's working. Oh, no, I, you know what? If you can't tell when I'm mad and going to kick something, you're not listening. <laughs> True story. <laughs> that's, that's a fair True, assessment. True story. <laughs> the next time, the next time we bowl, Brian. Here's okay. what I here's what I I want you to try, okay? Okay, I'm listening. The whole night, okay. I don't want you to verbally assault the air, okay? Okay, 
That means no loud F-bombs where they can hear you down on lane one when you're on lane 16, which is downstairs. Then what's the point? Hold on. <laughs> this is going done. a little too far already. I'm not done. I'm going to ask Brian a quick question. Mm-hmm. And he could probably legit answer this. When was the last time you saw me get so mad that they could hear me eight lanes over? 2019 Tom Darby at your home house in Oxford. Oh, and you boy, put, that was a good and, one. And, and you put a two fill on a mark in the 10th and we lost by four. And you screamed loud enough that the people at the McDonald's down the road heard you. Dude, and your mother was there. My mother was there. She just kind of looked at me and I went, I did not apologize either. I was, she, not. she called him Timothy. She did. She was like, Timothy. You got the full name. She was like, Timothy. And I was like, I was like, mother, right now is not the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> and she laughed. I can't say anything. I would have said the same thing to my mom. My yeah. Dominic mom, cut the shit. Not now. <laughs> I love you, but not now. It's so here's, so Brian, I want you to go a full night without getting mad. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. There was no special treat at the end of the day other than when we're done. I will say congratulations. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. All right. We'll try it. On those terms, I'd just yell out F after the first ball I threw anyway. Even if I got a strike, I'd still turn. I'd look right at you and go, what? What are you going to do? And no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring a giant whiteboard or construction paper and a Sharpie ah. and I'm going to write curse words and I'm going to hold them up. I that I'm whiteboard. sorry. That'd be awesome. Whiteboard. <laughs> that would be great. That would be I, epic. That would, that would be awesome. Oh, Hey, you know what we need? We need a telestrator okay. for the bowling show. I want a John Madden shots. You know, you got the three pin over here and you're going to come in and go boom, tough acting, ten acting. And then you're going to go, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. That be that would be pretty cool. Uh, by the way, I do want to before we get too deep into this. Um, I know we thanked uh, Hoagie at the end of the last show on. Um, I don't even know. Friday. This is Tuesday. Friday. Thank you. I had. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm old. Um, so I want to thank Hoagie at the beginning of this show um, for the work he's done on his own to, uh, you know, to try to better the show. Um, he's creating a website for us, which is really cool. Um, it's very cool. Thanks, I, especially when I really, it honestly, only said it like just a flip, throwaway comment. And oh he, no, the, it, the the next day he messages me. He's like, "So I hear you want a website." I'm like, "Oh yeah, Tim mentioned it offhand. You know, we talked about it." The next message I get is a link, and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> well, I." I also would like a million dollars. We're going to see how this pans out this week. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you get another link. And you know what? For a million dollars, I will pay you for free. Nothing. Gladly, too. Look gladly. at the look on his face. He's smiling. Mm-hmm. He'd yes. gladly give you nothing for that. Yes. Absolutely. So, no, Thanks, thank Paulie. you, Hoagie. Uh, really appreciate it. That is Absolutely. super cool. Super yeah, cool. Very awesome. Um, and check out the Discord he did too, if you get a chance. There's a for those of you who don't know, Discord is it's like Reddit, but it's more personalized. You don't get everything. Um, and it's it's a cool database. There's chat rooms in there. You can get in there and talk. And he's created a bunch of folders and stuff in there that you can put old tournament scores and stuff in. So you should check it out. I do need what? to get into that Discord. Tim, <laughs> Tim, what what is it, Tim? I'm he sorry. just spotted and he smelled. No, I can. <laughs> he doesn't know what Discord is. No, no, I was gonna go and don't forget you're gonna be finding us on on <sighs> uh, on Instagram soon, and you can probably find us on OnlyFans. So. Here we go again. <laughs> We're not gonna digress into that. Oh, God. <laughs> everybody! If if you want to listen to a solid OnlyFans rant, you need to watch the Free for All Friday show. And you need to listen to the last, like, you need to listen to the whole show, but pay but definitely pay attention, attention to the last, to the last five or ten, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please do. Oh, Please God. do. If you're having a three, bad day, listen to that. You'll have a good day. Three men oh. are hysterically broken <laughs> yeah. over an idea that should never, ever happen. 
However, the thought of it happening completely broke three <laughs> grown men. So <laughs> listen to that. You're going to laugh your ass off. Uh, and, uh, and I will say, Scotty, uh, Scotty Astorbrooks, thank you, buddy, for your email. Unfortunately, uh, we did not get that before we started taping um, for the Friday show. So the next Tuesday show, we are going to bring that email up and we are going to discuss what you said in that. We're not going to tease it here. We'll just tease that there was an email. We won't say the contents of that email. Little cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave a cliffhanger for you for next week. Bum, bum, bum. Yes. Mr. Wolf, um, fire. So, so, we are coming up here the end of March. This is March 30th. Um, thank Christ, we're coming into April. Uh, Easter Sunday. Timmy hates the cold. I do. I can't stand the cold. Um, Easter Sunday coming up. Mm -hmm. You've got another, I think, three days to sign up for it, folks. Reach out to Lita Lanes. You can find them on Facebook, or you can call call the Bowling Alley. Sign up. 150 bucks gets you in. 20 strings later, you could potentially walk out of there with money. I, I don't know how much because they haven't said how much, but it's usually. They did not also say. You can sign up and you can pay day of. I yes. saw that today. Just let them know you're coming so they know how much food to have. Yes. Up to a maximum, I believe, of 108. 102. 102? They said 102, um, which would be cool. That It's been a while since they've had 102 bowlers for the Easter Classic. So. Has it ever filled? Oh, God, yeah. Did it? Yeah. I've never seen it in the years. I've. I think my first Easter Classic I bowled was... 2000 like six 2000 yeah no it did it, I, so and it was like they said back in like 93 uh they had a waiting list <laughs> yeah they had a waiting list that's in true the, in, in that the era. 80s yeah. in the 80s and the 90s uh mid 90s early to mid 90s and i think it probably started late 90s early 2000s it started dwindling a little bit um uh, like i said i i i won't be bowling in it this year um, I am going to rehab my shoulder, rehab my back, rehab my knees, feet, elbows. Man, you need like whatever Keith Richards does every year. Like you need that opiates. treatment. Copious amounts of coke. I was about to say that's opiates and cocaine. I I wouldn't rely on that. Keith Richards is like the statistical anomaly. <laughs> yeah. Do you he's think like, he's, he's like? Do Neo you think he's actually embalmed? Like he at this point? Do you think he's technically embalmed himself at this point? <laughs> he, he might be. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I broke Tim. He broke that, me. I just I forgot what I was. Gonna, oh, so we got the Easter Classic, and then again coming up, folks. Uh, you still got plenty of time to sign up. April seventeenth at Stars and Strikes Bowling Center in beautiful and the thriving metropolis of South Paris, Maine. Uh, you have the second scratch ladder matches. That will be ultimate going ultimate ladder. Ultimate ladder. Saturday, April seventeenth at four o'clock. Um, the three of us will be there. We'll um, be there. I, I do not believe I'm going to bowl. Um, I haven't quite made up my mind, but I'm ninety nine percent sure I'm not going to bowl. Are you um, scared of Dumpy? I am not. It's a, again, it's a right handed bowling <laughs> alley, so I definitely not scared of Dumpy Daly. The old dump truck. He can back that. He can back that thing the up. The old and dump it. truck. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna get a text about that later. You let him say dump truck? Are you shitting me? I love Daly. I love Daly. Mm -hmm. I, I he, wish more young bowlers were like him and got fired I, up and I, listened to the show. Man, and I, basically, I listen to the show. I yeah. more people need to listen to the show. I, I OnlyFans. I'm telling you, they, we got to have an OnlyFans. They'll get a lot of listeners. <sighs> um. A lot of viewers. <laughs> you know, wait, people don't go to OnlyFans to listen to, like, anything. Tim, do you know what OnlyFans is? I think you keep using this phrase, but I don't think it means what you think it means. So Great meme. I, know, I love that meme. I, <laughs> I, I understand what OnlyFans is. Okay. I do. I'm not. Uh, again, I've never been on it because I just don't want to pay for shit that I can watch for free if I really wanted to. Why the fuck? Why are we talking about that? This is a bull. You, you brought this shit you. up. 
You, you brought only well, fans. Well, you up. guys are supposed to be the responsible ones out of this. No, no, no. Now we have to completely just keep breaking you with this uh, as much as we possibly can. That's this true. This is important. Um, Tim only fans Matero. Yeah. <laughs> at gmail.com. T- t- oh my <laughs> god. Him questions and concerns. T- t- Team only fans. Uh, um, so Tim will email you back a free password, good for thirty days, to his only fans account. <laughs> Sign up now. Oh my god! Oh. Oh, now that now that listener and viewership is zero, what are we going to yeah, talk right. about for bowling? <laughs> Since so, we lost everything. He said, "So we have a uh, question from uh, Dump Truck Daily. Um, we do have a question oh, from god. him. And I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm about to." die again but i think i'm okay all right i think we're good all um, right N- nice recovery thank you so he is piggybacking on our last show where we ended the show talking about the worlds um okay apparently tim's gonna die again sorry apparently i'm back to dying again. i don't know where the other cat is like i don't get it um I get I get a cat hissing and I'm like I can't see a second cat. I'm like, what the hell are you hissing at? Well, cats do uh, see ghosts, Tim. I know. Um Daily oh, question. Yep. Thank you. So uh we had started talking about uh worlds teams and kind of what you look for in a worlds team and, and things like that. So I, I know we probably need to finish that conversation because I really don't know as if we gave it. <laughs> Kitty. Enough, enough time. I feel like I'm going to die. You're fine. Get a, You're fine. A tail uh-huh. in the face anyway. Um, uh, so I don't know as if we gave it necessarily enough time. You guys can tell me if we did. If you guys want to continue talking about that and then we can jump into Josh's well, let's uh, jump into his question and see what his question is. We'll see how it relates to what we talked about. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Joshua Daly sent us an email. I'm sorry. I am getting so distracted with this cat. Yes, you are. But I don't know what he's growling at. That's the problem. And he's sitting next to me, and I'm a little bit scared. Well, if it was you, you probably would have got a couple bites by now. Yeah. You're fine. He's new. Well, he's new to the house as of to, uh, as of uh, to, um, oh my god, what day? Is it? Um, it's Tuesday, Tim. Yes, Tim. It's Tuesday. Jesus, it is. So, so almost he's a week. New as of, he's new. It's almost a week, and he's he, and there's still some. Can you hear that? Animosity from the other cats. I would take it. Anyway. <laughs> It's going to take a while for them to work. I know. Each other. It's going to I take a while. Know. They're not going to be best friends right off. Nope. Um, so, Josh Daly says, I know it's not around the corner and still more than a few months away, but <coughs> what is your favorite experience at the Worlds? It could be a favorite match, your favorite string, bowling against your idol, or even a story. But what is everyone's favorite memory that they will always hold on to? Um, Maki, I'm gonna, I'll start with you and. We might have a couple of different rotations here because we've all bowled long enough now where we may have a few memories mm-hmm. that I really have, stand out. I have so many different – I have the, the, my favorite shot I ever made, the favorite match I was ever – what you you, What's your favorite shot you've ever made in the world? We, so, okay, 2010 in Bangor, lane 20. Uh, hit the head pin, first ball, left the five, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten. I basically so threw the back a ball. row plus five. Correct. The triangle yeah. in the middle in the seven ten. Yeah. My daughter Brianna probably could have thrown a better ball at that moment in time. That was a late weak ball. It was a tired mm-hmm. arm ball. No wood on the deck. Hit the five pin for the spin. And I was just going for a nine box. I'm like, make the triangle and then take a corner pin for a nine. I cherried the five as hard as humanly possible. And it nicked the eight and the nine both this way. And they both kicked out the seven and the ten. Instantly. Wow. Just yeah. Pew, and it went gone. And I learned a lesson in that moment because I celebrated and used every ounce of energy that I had in my end. We know what the world's is, right? The world's mm-hmm. is full of instant adrenaline shots. It's not something where you could stay up here all week long. You, you get up here in the beginning of the day and then you get tired and the matches start. And you know, it, towards the end of the day, maybe later in the week, it's harder to get that up. 
but I literally went from zero to a hundred like that. And I celebrate, I jumped in the air about four feet with this tiny little vertical leap. Like I jumped as hot as I could and everything. And I screamed and I yelled and everything. And the next box, I plunked a seven pin in the face for a solid one fill. Cause you were tired. I high fived and I did everything I humanly could. And then I realized after I went, shit, I got to push the button. I got to fill that. Oh no. My hand is like vibrating. I was high fiving guys so hot. (laughs) <laughs> and and it, it just I'm like, all right, I gotta calm down. And I couldn't. My whole body was just like sitting on like a vibrator, just blah, 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 like everything. And I threw it and the ball left my hand and I went, stay on the lane. Stay on, stay on the lane. I'm at the world, stay on the lane. I've still to this day never thrown a gutter ball at the world. Ever in my life thrown a gutter ball. And I never will either. But this was the closest I ever came. I plunked a seven pin in the face for a one fill. I did not give a shit. I still don't care. That was the shot of the damn tournament. I and, it was never a, and, it, and it wasn't a zero on a spare in the world. And it was either. not a zero. I ended up getting a 10 box out of that one plunk. So at least I protected the one. <laughs> but that was my favorite shot of my entire life. Nice. My favorite overall world's moment, though, for me personally, is 2013 in Moncton when I won the singles. Uh, yep. That is a feeling. I will never replicate that feeling. That is the pinnacle. That is like birth of your child, excitement, happiness, getting married, me getting the bowling alley here, having that be my, like there's certain milestones in life that you hit that just can't be equaled by anything else. And I think the only thing that could surpass that is if I get my name on the big trophy, which I don't have that yet. I've been to the finals twice, but I've never gotten my name on the trophy just yet. But overall, for my entire life, the most instant I think of the worlds, I think of 13. Yeah. Brian, what about you? What's, uh, what's your favorite? Do you, do you have a favorite shot? Because that's actually um, pretty cool because I got a couple yeah. that I could talk about. I made the uh, four, five, seven, eight with no wood, and I cut the five pin over into the rest of it in Halifax. That oh, was pretty cool. What, pick, what was it again? The the, fence. The, the, yeah, the picket fence, and I cut the five pin into everything. I didn't play the inside triangle off the wall. Oh, you just cut the five pin over? Yeah, I did it against Snozzy, which even made it more fun. Because it's the only time I've ever seen him just stand there and not say a word. That used to be and one I, of my favorite things to do was to make snoz stop snozzing. Yeah. <laughs> I love the man. I love it. It was man. his Chris, first time man. back. It was that first, um, the first time he came back after a long time with Patty's Pub that year in Halifax. And I was bowling with Main Heat. And we only had, it was Chris Cicchetti's first Worlds. He bowled with us that year. Um, and we only had five guys, pretty much. And we had some that was guys. Seven. And that was 2007. I remember that. Yes. Yep. I remember that. Yep. Um, and then I think one of my favorite memories in the worlds, one of them, I, I threw 150 my first string in the worlds ever. The last, string, really? of month, the last string of Tuesday, I threw 150. So and it, it bleeds was... into the next, the next day but, when but I got to bowl, Charlie let me heads up that. and beat Charlie. That 150, if I'm not mistaken, we were bowling next to you, right? Mm-hmm. You were to the right of us. You were to the, we were to the right, and we were giving Kenny shit, Kenny Bickford, who was your he team didn't captain. let me bowl all day. And you come out and throw a 150 at him. Mm-hmm. Not at him, but just. We were bowling uh, back in that day. It was Wafu, I think we were bowling, way back before they were A+. plus. So it yep. was like. Um, Nate LeBlanc's brother, and uh, Matt, 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 yeah, and um, Canadian Jesus, Todd, Todd Harrison, Toddy. I think Hot it was the year, it was the year before they became a plus or, yep. yeah, yeah. I re- I remember that because then that that's going to lead into your actually favorite memory. Um, the shot will my first year in the worlds that was still. Three, the my one of my favorite memories that you're talking about was still three years away. It was the next time. Oh, oh, oh Halifax. okay. Okay. All right. We'll get to that one. Beating Charlie the next day, heads up, was pretty fun. Though that my first year. Yep. Yep. Um, so I actually have two kind of look. Let's face it. My favorite memory, and I could take a whole thing to talk about it, was winning the worlds in in 2001. Um, that was. Uh, uh, by far the coolest 
experience in the game of bowling I've ever had, and it rivals the birth of my son, my wedding. Um, I can I, only I I don't know what the feeling is after it's so, over. And you, you win, know, like is it well, relief? Me, is it joy? You, is it? So let me tell you, kind of the we we went up with six guys, okay, and you got to remember. Three of these guys were 59 or older. Okay, Russ Neely, Charlie Milan was 62, I think. At the, no, 63. I don't know, somewhere in that early to mid 60s. Uh, Jerry Scott was late 50s, early 60s. Russ was late 50s. You had James Milan. You had me. I was 30, and then you had Sean Morrison at eight, 19, 18 or 19. Okay. Um, Definitely a mix of errors right there, I bowled, big time. Sean and I bowled almost every string. Um, I think I had, I'm going to say maybe a match off in the entire week. Maybe. I think I bowled, mm-hmm. I bowled like, tw- like 30 strings out of the 33. And I think Morrison was 31 strings out of the 30, something like that. We bowled a lot. Um, I was a 125 for the week. Morrison was a 124. We were all right between that 120, 125. Um, we qualified, I think it was fourth, I think, um, and had to bowl lucky seven, which was Dick O'Connell, Chip Carson, and whatever. Badney was on that team too, I think. At the I, time. He might have been New Hampshire All-Stars. I can't remember. Mm. I, just, I just, I really don't remember who the teams were. So, Morrison in the first match on Friday in the playoffs went four sixty something, and I was four and I was four forty something. So Morrison was bowling fourth, I was bowling fifth. So your your fourth and fifth guy just went four sixty and four forty something. Just went nine hundred between two guys. Yeah. Holy shite. Yeah. First match on Saturday was against. New Hampshire All Stars, maybe. I don't remember. Um, Morrison went four thirty, and I went four twenty. And then the semifinals, uh, Morrison was three ninety, and I was four fifteen, four twenty. And then in the finals, when we bowled. Uh, we bowled uh, McLaughlin truck and trailer. Um, I went 380 something and Morrison was 420, somewhere in that range. He averaged he averaged 144 for the playoffs. I was 138 for the playoffs. It's fantastic. That's how you win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and you guys you, you guys had the injury bug too. You only had five guys for like so Jerry Thursday Jerry Scott end. Jerry Scott on Friday morning looks at Charlie and says. Don't put me in the lineup. I'm too nervous to bowl. What? Yep. Oh, that was on was that was Friday. That was Friday morning. So Charlie, Russ, myself, James, and Sean bowled it out from there. Every every box of the playoffs, you know, there's a 60 plus year old man bowling 12 strings in the playoffs. You know, there's Russ at 59. Uh Charlie must have been exhausted. Does Charlie ever get exhausted bowling? He'd never tell you. Because you'd never notice it. He'd throw the ball the same way. Um, So when we won, so two boxes to go, we had had come down from, we were down at one point just about 100 pins, and we came all the way back. Um, Morrison threw a huge double in the, eighth and ninth box i think it was something like that uh either seventh and eighth or eighth and ninth i can't i can't remember he threw a huge double gave us a lead uh my last two boxes was against robbie henderson neither one of us on a mark i'm up 20 pins with two boxes to go i'm on the right um i've said this story multiple times charlie pulls me aside puts his hands on my shoulders look goes just like this looks me dead in the eye Takes a breath and says, 
if you blow this lead, I'll cut your fucking nuts off. <laughs> and he turns around and walks away. Because <laughs> everyone has to remember, Charlie hadn't won one at that point. Charlie had never won one, and Russ had never won one. Well, none of us had. Right. Had ever won but one. Charlie kind of started it, and he never won one. So, literally, if you blow this lead, I'll cut your fucking nuts off. Glad thanks you for didn't the, blow the lead, bro. Thanks for That's the pep talk, kids. Charlie. <laughs> your so, kids are very glad. Now, two things about bowling in Halifax and occasionally in Bangor that happened with my balls and my hands. If I go to pick up my bowling ball, it becomes ultra sticky in my hands. Like, I could literally go like this and the ball would stay right there. I, I, don't, know do if it's, I don't know if it's the silicone that they use. And my sweaty, whatever. So all week long, I struggle. Every once in a while, I'd lose a ball to the left. Just too much of a grip. It'd go off to the quarter pin. I I know that. I know what to expect. So I'm sitting there. The ball weighs, I don't know, a pound. (laughs) Sitting in my hand. Adrenaline. My hand's going crazy. I'm like, 20 pins. Holy shit. If I can throw. And you have and, a pitching machine standing next to you, ready right, to just annihilate the head pin because yep. that's what he's going to do. So I'm mm-hmm. sitting there and I'm just like, if I could throw a strike here, it'll end everything. <laughs> it'll be no doubt. I just got to throw it. If I can throw a strike, Marky, you know it. Brian knows it. When you're trying to throw a strike, you here throw the ball. A, here comes a spread eagle or a spread a eagle, point. or you leave it to the right because you don't want to throw it too hard, or mm-hmm. you overthrow it and you go to the left. Okay, it happens. I got halfway through my downswing, and I said, I probably shouldn't throw this ball. (laughs) That's a little (laughs) bit late for that, though. (laughs) I threw the ball and immediately immediately went, oh, no, loud enough that people could hear. I went, no. It went straight left by the head pin. By the quarter pin, right into the four seven pocket. Boom, boom, boom! All the way around to the last pin stand. It was a head pin. Boom, boom. Falls over for the strike in the ninth box. You 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 threw a strike. I threw a strike. I threw a hammer in the ninth box. I turn around. I got both arms up. I jumping off. James catches me. I look over, and there's Charlie with tears coming down. There's Russ sitting down like this with tears coming down. I'm a crier. What the fuck do you think happened with me? (laughs) Tears. Instant. Holy shit, we just won the Worlds. I look over. I see Robbie Henderson blow up by a nine-pin drop, misses it. All done. I I don't even know how I finished. I don't even know how I bowled that that tenth box because it's it it is the greatest feeling in in bowling is to know that you guys have won the worlds. Absolute bar none, the greatest feeling in Candleton bowling. Maybe I'm um, weird, but. Everyone talks about it's ten grand to win the worlds. I don't care how much money it is. I want my name on that trophy. Right. The money is in. The money. Don't get me wrong. The money is cool. Yeah. Ten grand's cool. The bowl for ten grand. That's look. It's cool. cool. I I walked out of it that week with about a little over two grand in my pocket. Morrison won the singles that year, and of course we all went as a team. So he gets half of that. The other half goes into the team money. Mm -hmm. Whatever money we won during the week, team money. So there were six of us, split it all up. I walked out it. Sure, I that was cool. But you know what though, my name is on that trophy. Mm-hmm. It will always be on that trophy. You can't take that shit away from me. Nope. It will always be there. So coolest thing ever. Um, I would love to have it on there again. I'm not gonna lie. I want my name on there again. Mm-hmm. To be able to sit there and say a two-time world champion. Um, unless you count the mixed worlds as being a world championship, which some people do. I do not. 
Okay. Personally, I do not. I have, I have, I, I was on the winning team in 2008, so I can say that, you know, I've won that. I've won this. You know, uh, like I would, I would call the mixed worlds like a major. Yes. Yes. I, I would definitely call it, and even though there's an international event, I still, I, I it, they're one string matches and stuff. So to me, it's not as, as, it's prestigious, yes, but not as. The still, worlds as I, we know it. I still, I do call it, and I will always call it a world championship because it is an international event. It is a team event. It is a mixed world. They do call it the mixed worlds. Like you, I would consider if we had major tournaments, mm-hmm. that would be a major. That'd be like our Masters or our U.S. Open British or yes. whatever you want to call it. I think it. it's kind of a cool all-star game type of thing. We're all bowling for something, but it's everybody that comes. Like Canadians, men, women. You occasionally get the young up-and-coming junior in there, like your amateurs that you get in the golf tournament occasionally. It's kind of a cool little all-star game to have in the summer. You know, it's not bowling season. It's kind of halfway between worlds for us. But I, I think it's a great tournament. I love that tournament. It, oh, absolutely. I wish I had bowled in it more. And I love um, that it's two boxes at a time. I wish everything was two boxes at a time. I love two boxes at a time. I'm the odd American that would prefer to bowl that way. I like two boxes at a time now. So, I, I will, I'm i sorry. I, I, I mm-hmm. went deep on that Well, that's question. a... The... The two shots that I wanted to take, because Maki brought it up, there's two. Brian w- Brian witnessed one of them, and it was actually back-to-back shots in the 2016, 2015 Worlds in Fredericton. It's, it's my favorite Tim Matera story. So one of them. I will finish with that one. The first one was in the Worlds, um, Bolin Anchor. Oh, Mar- this Marky was... was there for that, too. No, I was on that team in 16. No, no, no. You were no, standing no. behind this match when it happened. You were walking oh, in Fredericton. I, I was on the Academy Lanes team that year. That was my last yeah, you year on Academy. Did, you guys were we, watching us because we, we were, were duking it out with you. Mm-hmm. We For the fifth split, spot. I believe. We needed you guys to like lose six or something to get in a tiebreaker, but we had the tiebreaker. It was like one of those like mm-hmm. we yeah, might you get had in pinfall. if 37 things happen. Right, right. So in the, in the last string... In the seventh and eighth box, I think I was bowling third or fourth. I, I wasn't bowling anchor then. Uh, up in Fredericton, I had I, I threw the ball and I left the the five uh, the five nine seven with no wood, and I oh, yeah. and I cut cut it over and I made it. Beautiful. Got all excited. Next ball, I leave the five eight ten. With no wood. Ha! Ah, just the mirror. <laughs> the mirror. I turned around and I made it again. No shit. Mm-hmm. Brian turns and looks at... Two, thing, two things happened. One, the Academy team, you guys that were watching, yep. said, fuck. All of us. In Call us at that moment, yes. And left. It was like, no sense watching. That just sealed the match. So that was cool. The second thing, the second part of that was was Brian. All I can remember after I got so excited that I, that I made both of those back to back shots like that was Brian. Brian, just, I don't even know who you were talking to. Do you, Brian? Remember, like who you you were like that well, just ha- like that just happened, oh, or did you see that, or something like that. So there was uh, there was another bystander who. I will not name names because it's it's not flattering and they were rooting against us so that Mark's oh. team could get in. And Tim made both shots. I turn around. I go, that just happened. Did you see that? Did you see that just happened? <laughs> and I will say uh, right now, it was not me, regardless no. of people. No, being it wasn't on you. Teams. We know who I, I know never who root was. against. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah, I just want to. Yeah, clear people that. know who it work. was. People know who I know who it was. Um I don't. The, You'll have to text me later who it was. The, the mm-hmm. second, the second one that I will never forget. Um, <laughs> this was in my second or third world, so this was like ninety three or ninety four. Um, I'm bowling anchor. 
two boxes to go. I'm on the left. They're on the right. Ninth box, spread eagle for me. I make it. Pumped. I'm pumped. Yeah. Guy on the right, tenth box. I don't remember what he left, um, but it wasn't anything. He was. It wasn't anything good. It was. Could have been the seven ten. Could have been the back. I don't know. It was something not quite unmakeable, but almost unmakeable. And. I'm up there. I sound like, okay, I need a mark. I need another good fill and a mark, and we'll win the string. And I blow the spread eagle out again. They start celebrating. We just won, guys. We just won. No one makes that shot twice in a row. And not only that, but he's got to put a big fill on it. We just won. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I literally took a step back. Now, this is back when I was a little bit of an ass. And uh, I turned around and looked at him and said, I don't know why you guys are celebrating. We just won. I said, again, I don't know why you're celebrating. I'm just going to make this shot and throw a hammer on it, and we're going to win. I turned around, cut it over, and made it again. Oh, shit. Got all excited. The guy looks at me like, you're shitting me. I need an eight to tie, nine to win. I rip a solid five pin, nine pin drop. We win by win. Nice. I will never nice. forget. I will nice. never, ever forget making the spread eagle twice in a row in the ninth and tenth box in a world's match to win a string. It That's was insane. It's Is there cool. anything better than having your team rally? Because I just thought of a moment at Academy back in 2018 where I call it the doubles barrage. We're bowling Spitfire and we need points. We were taken on water. We needed points. And... I can't remember. I think Chris Merrill was bowling first and he threw a double. And then Kaler came up and he threw a double. And then Timmy goes like nine drop, makes it strike. And it's just like a doubles. And you could see them. They had a 35 pin lead with 10 boxes to go. And it just disappeared. I've had the <laughs> reverse happen to me. Uh, my very first playoff match, very first time I ever made the playoffs, my first Worlds was in 06. And we did not make the playoffs by a whole lot. (laughs) Next year, I changed teams. I went to Johnny Winchell. He was a captain of Total Chaos. That uh, at that time, John and I were good friends. He asked me to go over there, and I did. Um, We did very well. I think we came in like third in the division. Uh, We got a match on our side, and we happened to bowl a plus. And um, after two strings, we were up by a solid eighty pins. After 24 boxes completed, we were up by a solid 100, 110. We weren't going nuts, but just slowly Mm -hmm. out-mocking them. They get one, we get two. You know, we get one, they get none. We get tens, they get eights. So we're just chipping, like just adding on to it slowly. Like the reverse of just chipping it off a little bit, you know. And I will never forget this until the day I die. We lost this match by about 85 pins. Um, in the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So those four boxes on their team, that's 20 boxes for five guys. They threw 16 strikes. Five of them were doubles. All the other ones were eight or nine drops. And we went from puffy chess, wow, we're going to do this, to we're going into the ninth and tenth down 30 and they have four balls to our one. Oh my god they just turned on the strike machine anybody who was there was on that team with my kustak uh john winchell that klein that the man himself klein yeah. was on that team and we witnessed it taught me something immediately to your point tim how you say that you make the shots at the end to win the string when the other team is like it's over it's over we thought that game, that match was yeah. over we thought we had it we yeah. thought we were going to take out an A, not, not no pun intended, but an A-plus team in the world, in the team of A-plus. We thought we had that match, and we lost the match by a good 60 to 80 pins. I don't exactly remember how many because we're, I think we're still losing. I think somewhere <laughs> in the time machine, they're still adding pins on. Like Jerry Dunn just threw another double, like I think. It's called a I, – I call that uh, quicksand. Because you're happy yes. and you're just, uh, yeah, we're all right. We're fine. And then the next thing you know, you're up to your neck and you're going, what happened? We, right. we were, 
What happened? They just went eight for ten with six strikes. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. All right, well, let's get it back. Come on, boys. Come on, we're still up. We're still up. And then the next one, they go nine for ten with five strikes, three of those being doubles. Like adding on the doubles from the previous mm -hmm. ball and all that and, and everything else. And the next thing you know, there was an earthquake and we fell into the earth yep. and our chances at the play. That was my first ever playoff match. And that taught me something at the Worlds that literally no team is going to win until you're up by 31 pins with one box to go. Yep. Nobody is going yep. to win until that last button is pressed. So we had – go ahead, Bri. I was just going to say real quick, I, I've made the playoffs a few times. Let's go through my playoff runs. Hold on. First time I ever made playoffs, lucky. That didn't end well. Nope. Second time I ever made the playoffs, lucky. Shit. Third time we make the playoffs, lucky. Yay. And then, really? you know, I missed it. Yeah, I missed playoffs a couple times. Then they come back. All right, made the playoffs again. Oh, okay. We got a bowl, New England flooring. Hey, we made it. All right. And the next, the next morning, we were like, okay, we got a bowl. The next time. All right, we won that one. Now we're in the semis. Lucky. Fuck. <laughs> and then the next year, we're like, all right, we didn't draw Lucky. Perfect. We're in their division. They got the buy. We get the house team from Moncton where we had 400 people rooting against us. The only yes. people rooting for us was the nine of us. <laughs> I remember that match. Yeah, the, the playoffs have not been kind that. to Brian all but one year. <laughs> we, uh, we had a match against McLaughlin in Halifax 2005-ish, three, mm -hmm. five, somewhere in that range. Uh, we went almost 2,100, and they went like just over 2000, I think we were like 2090 and they were like 2030, somewhere in that range. And we took all eight. Could you imagine throwing 2000 as a team and losing all eight? No, but they <laughs> no. got the last laugh because they won the, they actually won the worlds that year. Like that goes to show you that what happens in that regular portion in the round robin does not dictate what's going to happen in the playoffs. As Steve Elvano said, survive in advance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember one year in Halifax, we were bowling. I was on um, what became the Academy Lanes team, what used to be the old Bob Caleri.com team. Crazy train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it was the year we made a run at the finals. We made it to the finals. The semifinal match in Halifax, on the left side, it was Crazy Train versus Total Chaos. That was the year I was sick. On the right side, the match that was happening to determine who goes to the finals was A-plus accounting versus uh, McLaughlin Truck. Yeah. There were 600 people crammed into the tiny... And this match took place all the way on the right side of Fair Lanes. Yep. If people don't remember, Fair Lanes was what? 36 or 38 lanes is a large mm -hmm. house. They used to have five pin and 10 pin and stuff. So this match was happening all the way on the right. There's five, 600 people down there watching the, the Canada versus Canada match. I think we had six people <laughs> watching. So that was the year that I got, I got the swine flu. Oh, you during got the swine? The, rooming during, with me. Rooming with Brian. I was bowling on, with Winchell. I was bowling on... Uh, total chaos. I bowled Tuesday. I bowled half a Wednesday. Wednesday night, I got so sick that I couldn't go Thursday. I went to the I went to the clinic on Thursday. They were like, "You've got the swine flu." I couldn't leave the hotel for Thursday and Friday and Saturday morning. We just looked, and I'm like, "I I can't bowl, uh, Brian." Let's. I doubled up on the emodium, and I said, "Let's go home." And so. That would have been, I, and I drove the whole way home from Halifax because it was me, Dad, and Tim. Dad doesn't drive, and Tim was too sick to drive. Yeah, you missed a snooze fest of a match too. We had nobody watching us. It was so hard to get up mm -hmm. for that match and get pumped and juice. Don't get me wrong; there was still excitement. There was still stuff there. Of course, but it felt like a Tuesday third match after. Yep. Not even Tuesday, for Christ's sake. It was like Wednesday, the middle match of Wednesday. Wednesday where, morning. Not even Wednesday morning, because there's still a little excitement. Yeah, it's true. You know, Wednesday afternoon match after your The third string of the second game, game on Wednesday. 
Yeah. Right. There was just, there wasn't any pep. All the pep was on the other side. Somebody got a 10 box and it sounded like somebody caught the game winning pass in the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> We're over here throwing, if somebody throws a double strike, like your team's like, yeah, that's good. And then the, the Canadians were looking down our way going, what the fuck are they making so much noise for? Like, yeah. even the fans were like, these guys are going to beat whoever comes out of you guys anyway. So, okay. Because it wasn't, yeah. like, East wasn't there, and Heat mm-hmm. wasn't there, and Lucky wasn't there, and, you know, all those big teams weren't in it at the moment. And, you know, we were a threat, as was Chaos a threat. They didn't take us lightly, but we ended up beating Chaos, and it was um, – I believe it was A plus beat Truck, and we—that's right—we bowled A plus in the final, and we beat them in the first string. It was like close, but like five, yeah. ten pins. And then I, it's another match that I think, if you got in a time machine, I think they're still adding pins on to the loss that we took in the final. It's we amazing. literally felt like Red Sox players at bat in Yankee Stadium yeah. with the fifty thousand raucous fans of New York cheering against you. Yeah, it, it was literally the devil's playground. For us, so we can uh, we could keep going and 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 talking another episode of the worlds, um, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap it up, folks. We we've kind of gone over. We were gonna try to limit this to around forty five minutes, but per usual, when the three of us get going, um, it's an especially hour. about worlds, like it's, it's it, it is, it's and uh, but we we are gonna wrap it up for this week. Um, again, I implore you. Ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook and the on Twitter. This is true. On Ripping the Rack podcast. You can also soon find us on Instagram. Oh, I you thought you were going to go with OnlyFans not... right there. I was about to nope. Get nope. You will not <laughs> find us on OnlyFans. Don't search for us. You could search for Maki if you want. You may find him. I do not have an OnlyFans. I don't. I'm, Bowling Alley's doing good for right now. I don't have to supplement the income. Okay. We're doing okay. All right. We're doing good. So, uh, Brian, where else Where else can they see our As always, Tim, they can listen to, listen to uh, us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Anchor, Breaker, YouTube, and wherever else you consume your podcast media. Again, if you're out and about, folks, killing me. stuff is opening up. If you're in the Amesbury area, go support Marky at Riverwalk. Go throw some strings. Tell, yeah, tell, love to tell, have you. Tell him Brian sent you. Yeah, okay. Brian, Athern, Fuller, Feist, whoever. There's lots of Brian's in the bowling world. Yes, Great just man. say Brian. All of them. Just say Brian. <laughs> Absolutely. You tell me Tim sent you, and I'm going to show you where the back door is of the place so you can just leave very quickly. Because that's where the OnlyFans are. That's so, right. Uh, that's where his OnlyFans account is. It's down the way. There's a walkway. There's a door yeah. over there. The entrance to his old. There's a password on the door. You could find it. Find it. Yeah. <laughs> it's Tim. Tim's OnlyFans dungeon. God. Oh. This OnlyFans thing is fucking killing me. Oh, it's killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. Oh my god, guys! Thank you. Uh, Great show, boys. Great again, show. Uh, you 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 can hear us all Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings. Friday mornings are any basically anything goes on Friday. Um, Except for some things which apparently are illegal in 32 states. Who knows? I don't know. But I'm we do pack. represent two different states down here. So maybe there's some shit that you could say I can't. Maybe I can say it. You That's can't. true. Who knows? They'll have we'll, to listen to find out. We do know OnlyFans is legal in both. So beware Matero's on the prowl. Yeah, it, no, I'm not doing OnlyFans. Yeah, well, let's just say that right now. now. That's what he says now. It's coming, folks. I got this Look, feeling. Look, the job... Look, the job's going okay. Angie's work is going okay. We're doing good. We can pay our bills. No OnlyFans needed yet. Well, I so. never said anything. You were going to be like having nudes up there, but I thought you were going to put pictures and your trophies and people can like pay to look at your shit. I, I could put the kitties on there. People want, pay to look, people want to pay to look at the kitties. They would. They yeah. absolutely would. Yeah, they, Beautiful they cats, love, by the way. They love to look at, at kitties on there. Yes. There's so many... Young okay, we got kitties <laughs> in Tim's house. There's gonna be so many angry guys typing in the word <laughs> and getting we so are mad when they pull up Tim. Skirting around being thrown off of YouTube. So everybody, yeah. thank you for watching. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. Have a have a great day. <laughs>